Good morning, everyone. My name is Holly Ruser, National Product Manager with Graybar, and I would like to welcome you to Graybar's G2 Talk presentation on how real-time data center intelligence pays off. This talk is a part of our webinar series we offer each month for our data communication customers. We've got a great discussion lined up for you today, uh, but before we get started, I'd like to cover just a few housekeeping items. Uh, first, if you were one of the first 50 people who joined in on this presentation, you'll receive a coupon for a free cup of coffee from a national coffee chain, courtesy of Graybar, as a thank you for your time. Also, at the bottom of your screen, you'll notice a box for questions and answers. Feel free to submit questions throughout the presentation. We'll address just as many questions as time permits at the end of the presentation. Lastly, our G2 Talks are all archived on the graybar.com website, so you'll be able to view this presentation again or share it with others. We're happy to team up today with Panduit. As a data communications distributor, Graybar works alongside Panduit to provide everything you might need to get your new or redesigned data center up and running just as quickly as possible. You can visit graybar.com backslash data center to learn more about our solutions. But this time, I'm happy to introduce today's speaker, Todd Lacanata. He's a business development manager for data centers at Panduit. And he's responsible for leading and setting the strategic direction for Panduit's intelligent data center offering. Todd has over 18 years experience in information technology, working for such companies as Ernst & Young, Capgemini, and CNA Insurance. He has a comprehensive understanding of network, server, and storage infrastructure applications relevant to data center strategy and operations. Todd also holds a bachelor's degree in operations management and information systems from Northern Illinois University. So without further ado, I would like to turn the presentation over to Todd. Take it away, Todd. Thanks, Holly. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for taking the time to uh, attend this webinar today. Hopefully you'll, uh, you'll gain something that you didn't know about DSIM uh, from it. Uh, so without further ado, um, today we're going to be talking about capacity management via DSIM and how real-time data center intelligence can pay off. Capacity management and planning is surfacing as one of the biggest issues in data center management. Infrastructures are becoming more complex, and demands on all resources and output are growing, and efficiency is becoming much more vital. Putting a management plan in place from the very start of your data center build or operation is the only way to keep an all-important balance between the four vital data center resources, power, cooling, space, and connectivity, that work towards an optimized data center operation. Unfortunately, once the data center is in operation, it is all too common for it to fall out of balance over time due to organic growth or ad hoc decisions. If you take the video game Tetris, for example, each shape represents a different data center resource. It's important to have awareness of how your complete landscape and exactly how those shapes and resources should be utilized. Without this, you could be making wrong decisions that cause problems in the future and carry forward an unbalanced, inefficient infrastructure, ending up with wasted capacity and you'll have to start all over again sooner rather than later. Carrying out changes and making decisions without the full insight into the impact of asset placement, power consumption, heat dissipation, and network connectivity changes can create an imbalance that can seriously compromise the data center's overall resilience and in turn, its stability and uptime. The end result is a range of inefficiencies and increased costs. Symptoms of stranded capacity include hot spots where there's not enough cooling, or difficulty in deploying equipment due to inefficient rack space. Another possible outcome is that you find last minute you find at the last minute that power and available ports aren't where you thought they were. The worst case is data center downtime. The data center will eventually come to an end of, end of its life having never used the full capacity that it was designed for.
The issues we've just discussed plague many data centers and cause further operational problems. These operational issues lead to bigger business problems such as downtime and increased operational expense, expense and capital expenditures, especially when the data center seem, is seemingly running out of capacity and you need to build a new one. But managers are often unaware of the stranded capacity problem and how it can affect the data center. Stranded data center capacity is often not identified until resources are running low and issues have cropped up, but by then, the problem can be serious. You may suffer downtime or even need to fork out for a new data center build. Let's see how we can address these capacity issues for each of these resources and overall. DSIM helps optimize capacity utilization and reduce fragmentation. Leveraging real-time infrastructure data and analytics provided by DSIM software helps maximize capacity utilization, whether it be for a brownfield or an existing, uh, sorry, a greenfield or an existing brownfield data center. And also reduces fragmentation, saving costs of retrofitting or building a new, a new data center. Automating data collection via sensors and instrumentation throughout the data center generates positive return on investment while combined with DSIM software to yield insights for better decision making. The power of DSIM is that it gives data center managers the visibility and intelligence they need to address challenges like fragmentation and, and stranded capacity. After all, you can't solve problems that you don't know about. DSIM can provide huge amounts of valuable information about your power, cooling, space, and connectivity. It's important to be able to identify where you should focus in order to grab the quick wins. A good DSIM solution will deliver actionable intelligence to help you make these decisions and guide you along the way. We're now going to take a look at some common problems um, in different aspects of DSIM. First, we're going to look at power, energy, and cooling. Energy costs are continually rising. Without granular and holistic visibility into data center power consumption, it is very difficult to ensure energy efficient energy utilization to meet corporate, uh, or to meet corporate energy reduction goals. A DSIM solution that provides detailed, granular, and holistic information regarding power usage is critically important. If you can monitor exactly where things are hot and where they're cold, you can work productively to utilize the available cooling more efficiently, which means not having to overcool the data center. Over time, the best way to manage cooling and avoid hotspots is to extract information regarding the data center infrastructure from your DSIM software. Feed it into a computational fluid dynamics modeling software tool to get an understanding of thermal characteristics and then how to improve them. CFD is a numerical technique that provides insight into thermal and airflow behavior by modeling what-if scenarios to optimize data center layout and address hotspots. Now looking at the space and connectivity side, when rack, <clears throat> when rack space runs short, it tends to be obvious. It's, a primarily, it's primarily an operational problem. Data center managers need to deploy assets, but find that there isn't the space for them due to lack of forward planning. It could be the case that the data center is completely full, but more often that there is not an available rack space that can be used because of previous asset placements and their impact on the surroundings and it's difficult to move these assets once they're running. Many, if not most, data center managers do not track connectivity in detail, so it's often unknown to them exactly which ports are taken up and by what. Many ignore connectivity when in fact it is just as important a consideration for overall efficiency of space, power, and cooling. It can be frustrating to be in the process of deploying assets only to discover that they can't be placed in the available space 
because there is no net network connectivity deployed. Being able to plan right from the start to use space effectively is an optimal strategy. The answer is to use DSIM solutions that monitor port connections and connected devices from the beginning. Like I said before, you can't monitor what you don't know. And starting from day two of your data center operations, you can begin to increase your stranded capacity by not having the processes or the information to be able to provision devices in the right location. Taking a modular step-by-step -step approach to obtaining manageable, actionable information will help you on the road to optimal capacity management and help you gain a tangible ROI along the way. So by looking at this chart, we can see that there's different maturity levels for DSIM. There's a basic understanding, and then by taking some actions uh, by the information that you get, you can move to the next level um, that increases your safety margin. By adding more functionality within DSIM or different modules within DSIM, you can then move to the next level of understanding where you can start identifying stranded capacity and obtain the information you need to reclaim that capacity. If you think of the, the four resources that we talked about, power, space, cooling, and connectivity as levers within the data center. When you pull one lever, something happens to the other three. By understanding that balance, that's where, and the impact, that's where you're going to be able to put the right processes in place and have the right tools in place to have an optimal or an optimized capacity management for your data center. Each resource is important in its own right, but the ways in which they affect each other are very important to take into account. Being fully aware of and finding the balance between these four critical resources is the only way to ensure that you have the right resources where you need them and at the right time, with maximum utilization efficiency and no unpleasant surprises around the corner. Smart Zone software and hardware solutions that Panduit offers helps you address your power and environmental challenges, asset tracking and connectivity monitoring, as well as security and remote access needs. Smart Zone hardware enables effective data capture of power consumption, environmental conditions, asset status, and connectivity at different IT and facility domain points that can be consolidated, processed, and sent to software for monitoring, display, and documentation. Access and control devices are available to help enable physical security to cabinets as well. SmartZone software monitors, displays, and documents real-time data from our monitoring devices or third-party devices to provide a comprehensive and granular understanding of your data center infrastructure throughout its life cycle and enable informed, accurate capacity management decisions. Like I said before, capacity management starts with the design of the data center through commissioning and operations. It's not something that should be looked at after you're fully uh, deployed and then start thinking about it. Smart Zone Implementation Services brings proven implementation strategies and best practices from previous engagements to make the implementation of smart zone solutions in the data center faster, easier, and more efficient. Panduit also offers professional services that can support 
our smartphone customers as well, in design services, as well as on-site audits and assessments, such as thermal assessments that identify and address hotspots and cooling issues while providing valuable cooling capacity information, helping to future-proof data centers against development of further thermal problems. If we look at Pandoit Smart Zone hardware solutions, it starts with the cabinet and the intelligence that goes around it, that goes into that cabinet. We have gateways that manage the devices. One of the things that we've we've done is looked at how we can man, uh, maximize the efficiency of the entire uh, the entire data center um, network connectivity. So a gateway allows you to plug multiple devices into the gateway that will do different uh, monitoring aspects, whether it be thermal monitoring, power monitoring, or aspects of security. The gateway then will link into your network via one switch port. You can outfit a, a cabinet with two PDUs, three sensors, a, secur a security device, I'm sorry, three temperature sensors, a security device, a humidity sensor, a air pressure sensor, and more. Each one of those, if not attached to a gateway, would take up a switch port within your, your network. Therefore, a gateway type architecture allows you to minimize uh, your switch port utilization um, of out-of-band devices such as the, the uh, smart zone sensors, and you can maximize them uh, for production network devices. Data centers are designed with a finite amount of capacity deemed suitable for requirements, and life cycle projections are made assuming all capacity will be used. While built-in capacity remains static throughout the data center life cycle, operational changes result in the capacity being used in less than optimal ways, and it can be very difficult to see where you may have gone wrong and how to change this and unlock the capacity that's lost. Also, once a data center is operational, it can be difficult to monitor effectively how effectively capacity is utilized and provisioned for the future. It can be especially difficult to know how you should continue provisioning resources and deploying assets in such a way that will be positive rather than detrimental to operations. Smart Zone DSIM software leverages an automatically updated database of space, power, space connectivity power and environmental data to aid in comprehensive capacity management to give you the visibility you need to improve capacity utilization and find the best fit for your asset. Panduit Smart Zone DSIM software helps data center managers determine the best fit for capacity in their facilities. As a data center manager, you, you need to understand where the best places are to deploy assets, answering questions such as, where do I have sufficient power, space, cooling, and connectivity to place these assets? BestFit automates the provisioning process by determining the optimal placement location based on avail available resource. Panduit, DSIM, <clears throat> Panduit Smart Zone DSIM solutions help data center managers determine this best fit for capacity in their facilities. By understanding or by inputting where you're going to be placing these devices within your data center, the tool can give you several different locations that allows you to determine where you want to put this device based on business rules that you define with your team. The tool will then show you on a, on a map within the data center where you have capacity for space and how that relates to cooling and, and power utilization within your data center.
What we see here is a CFD map of the data center and understanding where, thing, where uh, assets can be placed um, from, a, from a temperature perspective within the data center and how the airflow is affecting uh, or how the airflow is flowing throughout the data center. This will help us identify and begin to formulate a plan for reclaiming str stranded capacity. So Panduit DSIM solutions provide everything you need to get your data center capacity in order. And again, it's critical that we have these processes and, and procedures and tools in place when you commission your data center because without those proper policies and tools, you can start creating stranded capacity the second day of operations of, of your data center. And you may not see them until years down the road when it would be too late to, create, uh, to reclaim some of this stranded capacity. So why Panduit for helping you in your DSIM needs? Since 1955, Panduit has steadily grown its industry leadership position. Our global presence and local focus and customization has enabled stability and growth and is a guiding vision. As well as providing general physical infrastructure solutions, we are a recognized DSIM vendor and have been acknowledged and commended by multiple industry analysts. As well as power solutions, Panduit is able to provide comprehensive asset connectivity and thermal management solutions, as well as services and plans to guide you to optimal capacity management. Like previously mentioned, Panduit has been recognized by Gartner uh, in several different areas around DSIM. One most recent is the Critical Capabilities Report, where it analyzed several different aspects that I'll go into in the next couple of slides, um, but it analyzed several different aspects where we rated very highly against our competition. We have been recognized as a visionary in the Gartner Magic Quadrant, as well as it a major player in IDC's analysis of the worldwide DSIM market. As far as the Gartner critical capabilities, when looked at several use cases, we were ranked number one for co-location, number three for large or enterprise data centers, number one in environmental monitoring, number two in reporting and visualization, and number two in predictive analysis. Here's a case study of an internet provider in Europe that shows the, the Panduit solution. Panduit helped Zen Internet resolve issues through the application of smart zone solutions. Development of sustainable energy programs across Zen Internet's data center, the introduction of data center intelligence into its new greenfield data center, deployment of energy monitoring intelligence within its brownfield data centers, Measurement, management, and improvement of power efficiency through power, uh, through power, usage, power usage effectiveness, PUE. Enablement of remote monitoring to provide Zen Internet's customers with the functionality to access the data via a web-based portal. <clears throat> Monitor how much power its customers are using to avoid under or over provisioning and, and, and under or over provisioning. By understanding Zen Internet's challenges, Panda was able to leverage the variety of smart zone solutions to provide a holistic view of connectivity, energy, and environmental parameters for Zen's data centers, co-location, and service, server hosting sites. These solutions were designed to immediately improve operational and energy efficiencies, achieve rapid and significant cost reductions, and improve overall facility, facility performance with the intention of helping Zen align with its corporate energy initiatives.
another case study with a large financial, financial institution. They were looking to reduce their greenhouse gas emissions by double digits. They wanted to improve their data center operational efficiency, and most of their servers were running at less than 10% capacity. A full smart zone solution was deployed, which met the energy, energy efficiency and environmental targets four years ahead of their schedule, reduced their energy consumption by 20%, and freed up capacity for future operations. Again, for some more um, case studies and in, in, in real life scenarios that SmartZone has been deployed, um, we've done some work for some software companies, another large co-location, and everybody is aware of AT&T. Um, with AT&T, they had 40 CRAW units um, with 10 of them that were turned off prior to SmartZone being deployed. To improve the operational uh, reliability of AT&T's data center, we turned, on the, we turned those 10 units back on and we were still able to save them $186,000 per year. I'd like to thank you very much for your time and with that, I think we have uh, some time now for some questions. So Holly, I'll turn it back over to you. All right, Todd, thank you. It was an excellent presentation. Uh, at this time, we would like to address some questions. We do have some that are coming in that have been submitted. Uh, just as a reminder, you can submit a question using that Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. Uh, it's important to note, if we don't get to your question, uh, someone from Graybar will follow up with you after the presentation. So the first question that we have, and, and Todd, I'm going to give you a little bit of a heads up here. This is in relation to the slide that showed the CFD model, the airspeed. So the question is, does the CFD model show airspeed and direction at multiple levels or multiple layers or just the top-down image uh, as was shown in the slide? That's a great question. Um, this is not a fully um, featured CFD type of tool. Uh, so you're only looking at it at a single layer uh, within the tool itself. Um, Traditional CFD tools do allow you to look at it at multiple heights within the data center. Um, however, the tool just uh, takes kind of that middle road. Good question. Okay, great. Thanks, Todd. Okay, we have a second question, and this question uh, is, who would benefit from using the DSIM application? Another good question. Uh, we talked about data center managers in the in the presentation, um, depending on the size of the company, uh, data center managers are certainly a sweet spot that, that would benefit from using the tool. Um, you can look at IT directors, um, ITSM directors, VP of infrastructure, depending on the titles, things like that, all the way to the other end of the spectrum and look at, looking at facility managers. So DSIM really is the bridge um, or is one of the bridges uh, that allows uh, the facility team and, and the IT team to come together uh, for a very optimized and operationally efficient data center. Okay, great. Um, we have another question that is uh, related to the uh, ideal size. So what is the ideal size data center that DSIM is targeted for? DSIM can really play in a variety of sizes. Um, the the Panduit Smart Zone solution is very modular in nature, um, so a fully deployed uh, Smart Zone solution can handle a very large data center, um, and and can provide you different benefits um, for those very large data centers. Um, but it can also be deployed into very small data centers using only some of the module modules, um, because when you're in a small smaller data center. Uh, you may not be as concerned with some of uh, some of the different aspects of of the DSIM uh, tool. Uh, for example, you might be very interested in power uh, power consumption, so you can go and deploy a power aspect 
of DSIM um, within a small data center. Uh, you might have an interest in understanding temperature, um, so you can deploy some temperature sensors and, and gather some information that way, um, but you may not be interested in asset information or connectivity information because you're in a much smaller data center and you have control of that or, or a way to take care of that that, um, that scales for your, your data center. Uh, so it really just kind of depends on what's the issue and challenge or concern that you have in your data center, and we can tailor a solution to fit those needs and to solve those problems. Okay, great. So just to clarify, uh, Todd, for anyone, anyone that's on the call, when you talk about the different modules, you can do an all-encompassing solution, or you could, as you just mentioned, uh, just, to, just choose to do the power or the temperature, any of those as a standalone. Uh, what's the process uh, as you bolt on those modules? Is that uh, pretty straightforward, or what could you tell us about that? That's a good question, Holly. So um, I touched on the maturity model of the data center, and Pando had created this maturity mod uh, model uh, so that you can start at a very basic level um, and then grow from there. So uh, when we looked at the, the slide that had the... Um, the smart zone hardware on it, and we talked, and I talked about the gateway. Um, we have multiple different gateways that can scale in size in terms of adding devices to those gateways, uh, so that you can, you know, add multiple PDUs or add multiple sensors, or we can, we even have gateways that can handle multiple cabinets, you know, of of sensors and things like that. And then the software can scale too. We have um, a very basic software that's on our very um, low end of, of our DSIM application, our Rack Energy Kit, that, that gives you basic monitoring around power and environmental. Um, and then we can move up from there to, to get uh, much more functionality in terms of uh, reporting and alerting and, and communication. Um, and then you can get into um, you know, what we looked at in terms of best fit and, and, and you know, pure provisioning and, and understanding workflow analysis and things like that. Um, so it, it, it does scale accordingly depending on how your data center is going to grow. Okay, great. At this point, uh, it looks like uh, we're about out of time. Uh, if we didn't get to your question, again, a Graybar representative will follow up with you after the presentation to answer that question. Uh, and just as a reminder, the presentation will be archived on the graybar.com website. Uh, again, we want to thank you for your time. It was a, a very good presentation. I think Todd, you did a great job of uh, helping us to understand the DSIM application. So again, thank you for your time, and we hope you'll join us again next month for Graybar's G2 Talk. Thank you.